Hi, I'm Nigel Vardy, Frostbitten Mountaineer, Adventurer and Explorer and today I'm going to give you a five minute video on one of my top five tips. And the tip I'd like to talk about today is not just surviving but thriving. I'm seeing a big example of that at the moment because I'm in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil in South America and I'm in the middle of a favela. Now you might ask what a favela is. Well a favela is actually a plant that grows on the steep hillsides around Rio de Janeiro. But what's happened is that name, that plant's name, has become the byword for shantytown. Because people over the years have built favelas, shantytowns, on the high-sided hills of Rio de Janeiro. Everybody who has lots of money and is rich is in the bottom, in the lowlands, the bottom of the valleys. They build the tower blocks. All the workers and the poorer people have built upon the higher ground in these favelas. And they are bizarre, I think that's the only word I can give you. They're multi-dimensional, everybody's building them in every direction. But this is where I talk about surviving and thriving because you might think, Nigel, what are you talking about? You're in the middle of a, well, a slum, for what people might say, in the middle of South America. What's that got to do with it? Let me put it to you this way. The people here have nothing. They have started from nothing and they were only surviving. They've begged, borrowed, got hold of materials, things to build with, they've found land and they have created simple homes for themselves. They have started to thrive. More than that, they have built homes for their families, they have built communities. When they have problems, when they have issues, when things don't work, they don't sit on a committee for six months, 12 months, two years trying to sort it out. They sort it out as a community and they sit together and sort out issues such as drainage, electricity, schooling, education, whatever those issues are, they do them as a community. Working in schools as I do, what I see the children here doing is working very hard, particularly the teenagers, because they start school at six o'clock in the morning and finish one o'clock in the afternoon. That's not then an excuse to go and play, do nothing, lounge about, get on the Xbox or the PlayStation. That's time to go and do something with your life. And I see many of them running around here, running errands for people, helping carrying things, working, having little jobs because there's no backup here. There's no government going to say, if you don't work, we're going to give you money. We're going to pay for your children. We're going to pay for everything because nothing happens. You want something, you work for it. If children want pocket money, they go and run errands, they carry things, they help people, they guide people, they earn some money, they can go and buy something. There's no social security, there's no health care for free, they have to pay for what they have and so the children become entrepreneurs. They build from nothing little businesses, everything from taking tourists around the favela to mending electrical items to carrying things, people shopping, fetching things, bottled gas, there's no mains gas up here and helping people with their problems. They work hard because they know there is nobody backing them up. There is no excuse to sit about. There's nobody going to put food on the table because you've got to go and earn it. What I also see though is a great sense of community spirit because I don't see any children crying. I don't see them unhappy. I see them laughing. I see them working. I see them playing sport with each other. I see them taking care of each other and I see them watching out for each other. I think that is wonderful. And no matter how tough it is to get up the hundreds of steps in this place and all the tiny little rabbit warrens that there are, believe me there are, Everybody watches out for everybody else, helps everybody else. Somebody will keep an eye on the children. Everybody knows where everybody is. Everybody knows everybody in the village, in the town, in the favela. There's a fantastic community spirit and these people do not just survive. They thrive. And they thrive in tough conditions, in a very tough environment, on the side of a hillside, overlooking some of the most beautiful beaches in the world but they're in this multi-dimensional world of houses on top of houses at the sides of houses. They get a life, they sort their lives out, they smile, they laugh, they enjoy life. Because the people here in the favela do not just survive, they thrive.